Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Talks. Today we have five signs you are an IJ. And so the IJ types are the INFJ, ISFJ, INTJ, and ISTJ. Yeah, so just to connect the previous two videos we did on EJ, we're here today to talk about IJs and just want you to consider that both IJs and EJs are using the same extroverted judging functions and introverted perceiving functions, so sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. But IJs lead with an introverted perceiving function. Um, and this makes them slower to jump into action when you compare them with an EJ. Um, also, EJs prefer to plan, but they're also okay with needing to change course while they're in action. IJs have an innate desire to protect themselves from the unexpected and the chaos, so in order to avoid needing to change course quickly, they tend to have time processing first before they jump into action. And so the first sign is a strong desire to plan ahead and to know what's coming up before engaging in the outer world. IJs either tend to forecast the future and see the implications and consequences of their actions and how things will go, or they compare things to their past experiences but there's some level of planning involved, some level of preparation, whether it's mental preparation, just imagining it in your head, or literal preparation. Yeah, and just to add on, I think also it's important to say that SI as a dominant function may not have to have previous experience, but they definitely want to hear the idea before they jump in. So being able to plan a little bit. So maybe I don't have experience, but maybe I'm not going to say no unless you force me to make a decision right now. So maybe if you give me the idea, I'm going to go and I don't have experience myself, but I'll go and look up reviews or I'll ask people that I know outside of you, you know, what have you tried this? What did, what was your experience? So kind of gain that experience by proxy, if you will, um, when I don't have my own experience with it. And the second sign that you are or may be an IJ is that you have a strong relationship to safety and aversion to risk. So for this one, I like to say no trust falls, please. <laughs> unless I know you well or unless I've done the trust fall experiment in the past, um, unless I've really thought about all, all the consequences, as an IJ, I'm probably not going to love the idea of trust falls. Using SI, I will need to know you or trust you or know the situation before I'm just going to fall into it blindly. And using NI, I'm going to need time to consider all the possible risks and ways it could go wrong that I, so that I'm prepared and I'm okay with the risk. So maybe you could look at it as calculated risk for either case. Beautifully said. And so the next sign is holding back before engaging. IJs tend to hold back in new environments. So if they're suddenly with a new environment or with new people, the IJ needs time to learn what is expected before they will engage. And so they tend to hold back on making decisions until ample processing can occur first. Thus, don't spring things on IJs. Bring it up and then leave it alone. Come back around for a decision later. They need to feel like they fully processed it before moving forward. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, some of the stereotypes give IJs a bad rap in that they're unwilling to change, they're, they're stuck in their ways. But I think that IJs tend to be some of the most willing to change when given time. So if they can consider the possibilities and they can consider what they've experienced or what other people have experienced, they might be very willing to, to experience something new or to try something new. Uh, but it does take that, that little bit of time. So if you are an IJ, you may have noticed this tendency in yourself, or if you're, um, relating to an IJ, that's kind of a good tip in that you, um, you might get a lot more things to go the way you want them to if you just sort of put the idea out there, leave it alone and come back around later and readdress it. And so IJs need to percolate things. It's almost like a pressure cooker. And so with introverted sensing in the ISTJ and ISFJ, they're going to want to mull over all the relevant details before proceeding with an action. And with an INFJ or INTJ, 
they're going to have to wait to see until it all clicks into, into some sort of underlying principle or underlying trajectory that they can use to evaluate how they're going to move forward or what they're going to think about the situation. And so both types kind of need time to let it mull over, let it sit, let it simmer inside them. And then the fourth sign that you are or might be an IJ is really preferring to fly under the radar. Um, so getting noticed means often that you have to explain or you have to engage. And being an introvert, you tend to, um, and IJs still have that extroverted judging function. So they still want to engage. They still um, are, are attuned to the outer world and to um, the group in general, but they tend to prefer to do that in a more private way. So they may have a far reaching plan, but they may or may not share it with you, again, depending on their trust level. So they may have this vision that they're working towards, but unless you're close with them, unless they trust you, unless they are willing to share it, you may not know where they're headed. So it's not something that they generally feel a compulsion to share. And the other thing with flying under the radar is that IJs then won't have to, or have a lower chance of needing to engage without warning. They can sort of plan for when they engage. Yeah, nothing's going to catch them completely off guard. Flying under the radar keeps you from chaos. Chaos is the ultimate kryptonite of the IJs. And so that brings us to our last sign. And that's a need for alone time, processing time on a daily basis, not just a preference. And so with introverted sensing in the ISTJ and ISFJ, they like to reflect on experiences and what meaning they have on them individually and how things have changed over time. And with NI in INFJs and INTJs, they like to consider the implications and meanings of things and so they need that processing time to boil with it, to simmer with it, to let it sink in and crystallize. It's a necessity so that you can actually process information to its fullest. You need to be alone to do that. And so SI and NI work best alone. Yeah. And I think that um, being an EJ myself, it's so fun to hear you talk about that because I love my alone time and I do enjoy using my NI but it's not something I have to do. I can go through days and weeks even with only using it in tiny spurts. Doesn't always look the best because that is one of the strengths and something that needs some skill development as an EJ. But I do believe that that is a big difference if you're really considering yourself, is that alone time compulsory or is it something that I just really love and would hate to give up? That's a really good differentiator between IJ and EJ because they can be all the same functions, just, just a slightly different order. Exactly. And something to think about too is what are you thinking about in your alone time? Are you thinking about external things in the alone time? That's not true alone time. That's more of an extrovert who's just thinking about the outer world and what they're going to do once they get back into the outer world, which is not not recharging time? Or are you really just in your inner world and just exploring that inner world, which is more true alone time? And it's not attached to anything external. Yeah, that's so fascinating because you're exactly right. When I compare that then to myself as an EJ, when I am in that NA, NI space, I very much am thinking about outer world things. Cool. And so thanks, Diane, for coming out and sharing your wisdom. You're a great person to, to talk to about all of this because you, you're so succinct and to the point. And so you really hit the core of it. You hit the main points. And so thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.